Um, thank you all for coming tonight and joining us um, in our sports management showcase. Um, my name is Allison Bolin, and I'm an associate director of admissions at Niagara University. Um, I'm joined tonight by uh, Dean of, of uh, the Co College of Hospitality, Tourism, Management by Dr. Bridget Nealon. And I'm also joined, um, sorry, letting somebody in, um, by Dr. Cheryl Rohde. And I will kick it over to um, Dr. Bridget Nealon to tell us all about what we're gonna learn about tonight when it comes to sport management at Niagara University. Great, thanks guys. It's really great to uh, see everyone on the line. I know this is an exciting time for all of you as you're trying to figure out where you uh, want to apply to school and what is the best fit for you. And I'm glad that you're all considering Niagara. Um, I Tonight, the goal for tonight is just to kind of tell you a little bit more. I know I, I see some, some familiar names. So I know you guys have been following us, but really to, to kind of say why Niagara? What makes us different and what sets us apart from the rest as you guys contemplating starting the next chapter? Um, so uh, hopefully everyone can see my PowerPoint. I'm going to look to my colleagues for the thumbs up and we're going to get going tonight. Yep. Um, before I start, I just like to ask the students, is there have any questions at the start that, that you want to make sure you answer that we answer for you tonight um, before we, we kind of roll into this PowerPoint? I want to make sure that I know exactly what you're looking for and your expectations. So if there's something specific, feel free to unmute or drop in the chat and uh, and uh, Allison will make sure that I that I'm that I answer that question for you. If you have questions at all throughout, uh, feel free to use either the chat box or unmute. I want this to be very conversational. Uh, we are uh, kind of a family here at Niagara, and you should always feel like you're part of the conversation. So, why Niagara University and why sport management? Um, at Niagara University, uh, the biggest thing that I can talk about is you really do get the best of both worlds. Um, we, are a, we are a college of hospitality, tourism, and sport management. It actually, you by the time you guys get here, I have some exciting news. We will actually be the College of Hospitality, Sport, and Tourism Management. And our name is uh, including sport now because it is such an important piece of the work that we do and, um, and the stature of the program in our region here in Western New York. So you, you get so many different things when you come to study with us here. We are a college that is dedicated to what we call within the college, the experience economy. It's the part of our economy where if you think about it, it's where everyone spends their fun money. So whether you're taking a trip, going to a restaurant, going to the theater, watching a sports game or going to play sports, it's where people tend to save up and spend their money on the good, the good stuff in life. And, and to us, it requires uh, a specialized education that best prepares people to work in that sector of the economy. And we are certainly not alone. There are a numerous hospitality, tourism, and sport management programs in the country that are also recognizing the uniqueness of training future managers and leaders for this industry, specifically through a dedicated college. When you're part of a dedicated college, it means that the college is investing more resources. And I think that is the biggest thing to just emphasize with you all as you look at your various choices to study sport management. At Niagara, it is a very important part of our university. It has its own college that is dedicated to it. And the other part of the best of the both worlds though, is you also do get a business-based liberal arts education. So you are getting the skill set that you will, the skills that you need really to work in, in any industry, we just do it through the lens of sport, hospitality, and tourism. Again, that fun money part of our economy. Um, we are a small college, so uh, within a small university, which means you get lots of personal attention. You'll notice on the last slide of this PowerPoint is my contact information, and it's my cell phone. And I give students my cell phone because that's the type of relationships that we have here at Niagara. I don't ever want you to feel that you're at a place that you can't reach out to someone within our college and get that personal attention that you're looking for as you choose to, to choose to study at a private university. Uh, we don't give up though anything of the flexibility or innovation. That's actually something that uh, we are structured to really be innovative. We have students that are combining majors, they're combining programs, they're studying overseas, they're developing courses to uh, fit what they want to study and what they're doing in life. 
Uh, we have an innovation center over uh, in Niagara Falls called Trek, um, which runs uh, across from some of the larger tourism attractions. Uh, it's a pretty cool space, a co-working space that again, kind of tries to be an innovation growth spot or incubator. Um, you know, and that's what you can come to expect when you when you come to study at Niagara University. And again, I, I want to tell you that uh, we have a great faculty and you're going to get to talk to Dr. Rohde. There's some of they come from some of the best schools in the country to study uh, sport management at. But they came to Niagara because we are a university that has focused on the student experience and devoting specific dedicated resources to students and their curriculum while they study. I'm going to pause to see if there are any questions. Am I good? Okay. Um, we, uh, one of the unique things about Niagara, again, is, is we, we're not only a college of hospitality, sport, and tourism management, we are also one that has a long history of focusing on that side of the economy. And our network uh, within ho uh, hospitality, sport, and tourism runs pretty deep. Um, so we have network connections. Uh, you're going to hear a little bit more about that later on in my presentation. Um, and we have engaged alumni who really want to help you network and build into that long and very successful history. We run international programs in all three of the fun economy pieces, right? So we have international programs for hotel management. We have international programs in tourism, but most specific to you, we have international programs that allow you to get a little bit of a global experience uh, in the world of sport. We have two, we have a two course sequence that is run by a producer at ESPN. They are online courses, but then you all meet up and have the opportunity to uh, do some work during the January term or the spring break term over in the United Kingdom looking at uh, premier soccer and premier soccer leagues. Uh, it, uh, Professor Weish is also developing something that may be built around international tennis. Um, and we look forward to, again, kind of expanding those opportunities. Uh, because we are a, a college dedicated to that sector of the economy and training managers and leaders in that economy, we pride ourselves on having experiential opportunities. So built into your curriculum will be three classes that help you to break in to the network, uh, break into getting yourself familiar and ready, transitioning from being a high school student to a college student and then to a sports manager professionals. And those experiential opportunities will, for the sport management students, they really kind of expose you to the various subsectors of sport. So when you think about sport, there's really the professional sports sector, there's the collegiate sports sector, and then there's youth and recreational sports. A lot of times you guys might already have an idea of where you wanna work. You might think I wanna work in professional sports. I wanna work in college sports. You might wanna work in youth sports and recreational sports. What we try to do is give you a little bit of all of those experiences so that by the time you're a junior, you're like, mm, I definitely wanna pursue something with the Buffalo Bills or the Buffalo Sabres or something in Southern Ontario. All of those things are open, but we wanna make sure that you see the whole entire sports industry and then figure out where you really feel passionate about going to next. And again, the last piece on that is we, we handle, and again, it goes to the resources piece, and these are questions that you should be asking yourself throughout the college search processes. You know, how do I find those opportunities, Bridget? How do I get, you know, that, that's the scary part, right? We know you might know where you wanna go, but how do you get there? And that's really where uh, all of us here at Niagara, we want to place you there. We want to help you have the skill sets that, that places you into an internship. I just had the opportunity to do that for one of our grad students. I've been working with him for three weeks, and he's really been refining where exactly he wants to take his career. And then we mapped back down to what will that first internship experience be? And we got his resume together, worked with career services, had some introdu like introductory meetings with some various college athletics directors across the region. And he starts his internship as a athletic operations intern uh, on Monday. So that's kind of how we work here. We wanna make sure you feel supported and you feel the, the dedication of resources that the college is putting towards your education. At the end of the day, you graduate with a, batch, a bachelor's of science in sports management. It is a managerial degree. It is, you need a, you need a BA 
uh, or sorry, BS uh, to work in, in sport. It is, a, it is not an area in which you see a lot of people going into sport with a, with a high school degree or a, a two-year college degree. Um, and so this is what makes our program unique is we've really built it around trying to figure out what all the industry, whether you're going professional, collegiate, or youth and recreational sports, what they want to see, what skill sets that, that you want to have. So uh, sports operations is uh, an example I put up here. And that's something where you're going to come in and you're going to learn about program management. You're going to learn how to how athletic programs are run, what are the various jobs within the athletic program. Um, at Niagara, our students tend to do very well going and working in the event management piece of that. How do you, you know, you go to a sporting event and you just may enjoy the sporting event. You're probably not yet understanding, and that's our job to help you get there, is all the different jobs that go into just putting on a football game or a basketball game or a, a sports camp. Um, so that's where we kind of show you all the different jobs. And it's great to watch students embrace this process because they get to see which part they wanna work in. Do they wanna be on the communication side, running social media, writing game day um, wrap ups, writing promotional wrap ups to get people to come to an event? Um, or do they wanna be on the actual operation side, making sure that coaches get here, players get there, fans get here, uh, all of those things, they're very active jobs and they're jobs in which you get to use your problem solving skills and your communication skills. Uh, like every business, there's always people needed to count the money. So the revenue management side of the house is covered. You will take a two course accounting sequence that mirrors accounting courses taught in most colleges of business, except they're taught through the lens specific to sport. What do I mean by that? Well, in sport, we're typically looking at you know, ticket sales, that's, a, you're looking at your sources of revenue and how to process your ticket sales, selling your licensed products, uh, your corporate partnership sales, um, you know, and those are kind of some things that are unique to our industry. And we, we train students to understand how to both project those and, and budget those. Um, speaking from someone who's never been a numbers person and but the college, I'm a college former, former college athletics director, I can tell you that learning accounting was so much more fun, learning it through the lens of sport um, than it was in, in some of the other businesses that I've been involved in. So I think you'll enjoy even accounting classes if you're not a, a numbers person um, by, by studying with us here at Niagara. Uh, we, we, concessions is a huge part of sport whether you are running a professional college or youth sport, your concessions, as you guys know from probably spending a lot of money at pro sports games, it's where a lot of money's made. Uh, what's nice about Niagara is because we're linked to the, hospita uh, the College of Hospitality and Tourism, we actually, and we actually have a food and beverage service and you can actually take those classes, which I, our employers that come and recruit students from us really find beneficial because they want students that kind of understand their business world very specifically so they don't have to teach them all those things when they're hired. Last but not least is certainly external relations and external relations is really what you see at each and every professional sport event. You just don't realize you see it. And those are all the various relationships that sports teams have with the corporations that uh, sponsor them. So here we're, you know, we're in Western New York, we're a big Buffalo Bills country. And you know, you know that M&T Bank, because you read, you pull up the green flag, and you had all the very, you know, Josh Allen and M&T Bank, Josh Allen and Wester. Um, we those are examples of the external relations. Some of those are Josh's personal, uh, his own agency agreements. The M&T one is actually linked to the fact that the bills have an external relationship with the big bank. They the bank pays them money for exposure and being linked to their brand. Uh, those are all really great things that you get to learn and know pretty well before uh, when you leave here at Niagara. We have a master's degree program and certainly students, especially those students who might be bringing in a fair bit of college credit. It is, we, we have a system that you could build in to where you're getting, you know, counting some of your senior level courses into that master's of sport management degree. So that is certainly an option here. The other nice thing about having a master's in sport management program 
paired with an undergraduate program is that you get the benefit of some of the resources we bring to the master's students, which are additional speakers, um, and as well as having grad students there to be just more people for you to network with. Um, this slide's kind of, you know, you, would, you see this at most schools, but we really do, we're a professional program in a liberal arts college. And so much, when you think of liberal arts, when I was your age, like, what does that mean? Liberal arts just really means well-rounded. You get a well-rounded education. And why I always kind of say, don't discount liberal arts education. And here's a perfect example. When I was a college athletics director, a lot of my job was to go out and raise money and resources for our program to give a better student athlete experience for them, which is the job of most college athletics directors. Well, one evening I went in and I was actually meeting with a former uh, student athlete. He was a businessman, but his wife was an artist and she was an art history person. And I had thankfully taken an art history course uh, in college. And it just allowed me to have a little bit more of a deeper conversation with her and, and build a better relationship. And I think that's when you get from taking a lot of elective courses that will wrap around, and Dr. Rohde will talk a little bit about that, that wraps around your business and sport management courses. It just allows you to speak to so many different people. And so much about sport is building relationships within a team or organization. Uh, it also gives you those great skills of communication, critical thinking, and problem solving. And I think what people really enjoy working in the sports world is, they're very, like I said, they're very active jobs. You're you're critically thinking, you're problem solving with a team of people um, at every event or competition. And I, I think those are skills that we, we uh, definitely kind of bake through our curriculum to you. Uh, personal attention, again, we're a small school. You will be advised by full-time faculty. You will have a relationship, and Dr. Rohde's shaking her head here because she knows how important that is. You will have, a, by the time you finish your four years here, you will likely have stayed with just one faculty advisor, which is also a wonderful thing. You do not bounce around. And you will actually, you know, that, that faculty advisor will know you very well and you will know that faculty advisor very well. And they will really help you kind of carve out the education and the opportunities that you want in the world of sport. We have an assistant to the dean position too. And this is one I just love. I, we have someone here every day, 8.30 to 4.30, who is just here for you, the student. So if you have a question or a problem with registering or a problem with your bill, or I hate to say it, even a parking ticket, we can't pay the parking ticket for you, but we can help you figure out why you got the parking ticket. There's someone for you to go to. And, and I really think that's important as you invest in your education. Again, starting, I don't ever want you to feel like you didn't have someone you could go talk to. Um, getting kind of that best of the bull best of both worlds in terms of a great business education, but small personal resources dedicated to helping you build a career in sport. We have a very active career services. Um, I'm, I work with them very closely. You can go there for everything from resume review to interview prep to they actually have a, a career closet. Uh, if you have an interview on the fly, I actually sent someone over there today because uh, you'll hear about in a minute where I'm going to go to in just a minute. And we have a student who needed a sport coat and we were able to send him over there uh, to pick to grab a sport coat before we had a, a networking event. Um, and, and like everything here, we're a small school at the university at Niagara University, and it, it really um, it really kind of uh, makes things very approachable. The last piece is where I'm headed tonight is we have an alumni advantage weekend every weekend, and this is our alumni advantage weekend. And we have a our about 25 members of our of our alumni have headed back here to Niagara University's campus. Uh, tonight we have a networking event, and tomorrow they'll spend the morning with our students, helping them answer all the questions they might have about getting the most out of their Niagara education, as well as finding a job afterwards. I think I've touched a little bit upon this, but this is a question, again, as you make your college searches, you're looking at all of these great places you could study in the United States and even beyond. Make sure you ask this question. Does the sport management program that you're looking at provide you experiential opportunities? And so you're looking at both where do they place their student for internship and what type of experience do they offer as part of their college experience? Because we are a separate college that's dedicated kind of on that experience part of the economy, the, the fun money, right? We, we make sure that we get our students out 
first as a group with other students and then help them kind of have those experience to figure out where ultimately they wanna do their internships. Um, in the past few years, we have taken students to all of these places that you see on the screen. And again, this year we plan on taking students um, to Major League Baseball spring training. We have a formal partnership with Pagula Sports and Entertainment, which owns the Bills and the Sabres. And we regularly place students with them either as interns or as event volunteers. Um, being at an NCAA Division I institution, we work closely with Niagara University Athletics, which is a wonderful experience. Um, being able to work in Division I athletics and being at a school that is small enough that there is this kind of shared relationship back and forth between um, the sport management program here and Niagara University uh, and, and getting to learn from their athletic administrators and their coaches. Uh, being at a Division I institution, we're also part of the Metro Atlantic uh, Conference, and they host, put in, they put, they are a wonderful conference to work with because they typically bid on um, NCAA championships. And so our students have had the ability to work at NCAA uh, basketball games, typically those first round basketball games this year, spring 2022, Buffalo will be a host site, and our students will be there helping to work that event, making those connections, meeting with uh, NCA administrators and uh, tournament officials. Our students in the past have also worked the Frozen Four, which is the NCA Men's Ice Hockey Championship as that was hosted here in Western New York. So uh, we also do a lot with golf. So I'm, I'm throwing a lot at you, but it's pretty much a, a lot of exciting things that I'm excited to bring to the university in my first year as Dean. Next summer, we will actually be working with Ironman, Ironman Triathlon and we'll be part of the Geneva Ironman event that's happening just down the road in Geneva, New York. And our students who might be interested in working in that sector, the more individual sport based sector will get those experiences. I also do a lot with youth sports and the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation prior to coming here. And uh, we just received a large grant, Niagara University did, to be working with all the Western New York youth sports organizations to help them build a better business for themselves and the families that, that play within their leagues. I, I think I shared all of this information, got a little bit ahead of myself here, um, but you can see kind of, again, ask those questions about where do your experiential opportunities come from? And these are some of, so, so where does all of this leave you? How are you prepared then to enter the sports industry? And we have placed students in both professional, collegiate, and like I said, that youth or adult rec uh, sports uh, sector. Um, and you can see here some of the places that our students have worked, basically all the, the big five professional sports leagues, as well as some of the other ones like the National Lacrosse League, PGA events, Raceway. Um, we are doing a lot with motor, uh, motor sports. We have a professor who will be taking students to the Daytona 500 um, as volunteers uh, in the spring. Um, and, and we really try to kind of provide a well-rounded uh, opportunity for students in professional sports. And then um, we also kind of place students, like I said, in the support sectors of those sports. And I have an example of one of my alums went and worked for the Buffalo Bills in facilities management, met, a, met through that job, met a, a company that basically makes all the signage for a lot of the large venue, sporting venues in the nation and he recently moved over to take a job with them. So he's still working in sport. He's not necessarily working for one of the franchises. He's actually moved because it makes more money to work in some of these support sectors. So we also have a nice pipeline in terms of sending students to some of the support pieces of the industry. And then these are some of our college placements. And um, again, uh, I think we have a strong history of placing students in college athletic programs because they get such great experiences working with Niagara University Athletics and it allows them to really uh, then move in and take those experiences somewhere else. Uh, another word I wanna mention here, and again, I'm just kind of, yeah, the, I get to answer the question in a really favorable light, but I, it's really important to me that you just, you find the college that you're looking for and you, at, you, you kind of maybe know what the things that, that you need to look for. So in addition to kind of where the students are being placed, the other question, especially when you place students into working in college sports, for me as a professor and now as Dean, 
it was always my job that if my student was going on to work in college sports, it was either in a full-time job or a graduate assistantship that would pay for their graduate studies. And what's really unique about sport is that we, we end up preparing a lot of people very eligible for these graduate assistantships. And I'll just use myself as an example. I went to, I, was, I studied at a time where there wasn't too many sport management programs, but when I was an undergrad, I got a lot of experience doing NCA regulations work. And then when I went on to law school, I was able to apply for a graduate assistantship and I worked for the, at the university's athletics department as a graduate assistant in their NCA rules and regulations section of the athletics department. And then they paid for my, my, my graduate tuition. Those that's, that's not guaranteed, but it is a very common scenario. We've had a number of students move into graduate assistantships. So that is a question that you should be asking all your schools that you're looking at is, you know, do you place students into graduate assistantships or, you know, how many of your students move on to graduate assistantships? And here at Niagara, that's something we really focus on. And of course, like I said, that recreational sport industry cannot be discounted. Sometimes everyone's gravitating towards or going towards, I wanna work in professional or college sports, some of the, I think, best jobs in terms of just people enjoy, enjoying their jobs are jobs in the rec and sport uh, and youth sport industries. I call them the get slow or get rich slow jobs because they're not necessarily the bling jobs that come along with professional sport or college sport, but they tend to be jobs where people stay a really long time and love their jobs. And so we actually, uh, we have a lot of strong relationships with boys and girls clubs, uh, we have, you, we also have relationships with the YMCAs, but then we also have relationships with another uh, kind of uh, aspect that's unique to our program is private luxury clubs. So we have an organization here called CMAA, which is Club Managers Management Association of America. And they, it is actually a professional organization and it, it doesn't exist at every college, but we have one here. And our chapter actually prepares students to go and work at private luxury clubs you know, such as private golf clubs, country clubs, the New York Athletic Club, the Bohemian Club out in San Francisco, um, a number of coastal clubs. And the students uh, belong to this club. And actually, they, if they're in the club and they participate in the professional development, they are offered paid internships during the summer. And many of them go on to 100% placement rate in these jobs after graduation. Um, I'm just going to hit on some final slides, uh, and then I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Rohde. Let's first see if you have any questions and then pass it over to Dr. Rohde. Kind of getting to that flexibility and innovation piece. You, there's a lot of things you can do at a small university like uh, Niagara. You have all the resources of a university and uh, the resources of being a separate college, but you also are small enough with a curriculum that's flexible enough and open enough to allow you to do majors, minors, concentrations, co-ops, internships, uh, we definitely uh, allow for that. Another thing that makes us kind of innovative is we are a university that actually owns a summer baseball league. It's a wooden baseball collegiate league called the Niagara Power, and it plays out of Niagara Falls Sal Magley Stadium. And students actually uh, can do their internship hours or can simply just volunteer to be part of the staff. And if you think of it this way, it's a guaranteed internship placement in the sports industry. Uh, we can guarantee you that when you come here to Niagara University. You, will, you can work on Niagara Power and you can understand and learn what it's like to put on a baseball game and product and do everything on a much smaller scale than what you see sometimes at the professional level. Uh, for more information on the power, we'll be sure to uh, drop that link in the chat uh, by the end and, and forward it to you afterwards. So that concludes kind of my part of the presentation. And you can see here I'm Bridget and feel free to call me by my first name. That's kind of what I'm used to. I've been a sports management professor for over 20 years at a number of different schools. I'm also a sports lawyer that focuses on the regulatory side of sport. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have now or if you ever want to send me an email or shoot me a text, be happy to discuss those as well. Um, unfortunately, I do have to sign off now because we do have that networking event tonight with all of our alumni back in town. 
So I'm headed off to meet our current students. Our student leaders were invited to a special event with our alumni and I'll be headed off to see them uh, tonight, but I am passing it over. And I'm gonna stop my share here. I'm gonna pass it over to uh, Dr. Rohde who um, can uh, kind of go through the, the actual courses that you might take um, and what your next steps might be. But before I say goodbye, I just wanna make sure uh, Dominic and uh, let's see who else we have with us here tonight. We've got a good Dominic and uh, Kulisa, I hope I'm saying that right, and Alejandro. Um, if you have any questions, and if I didn't say your name right, please forgive me. I wanna make sure I get it right. So, all right guys, well, it's good to see you tonight. I hope that we get to talk more about you becoming a, a Purple Eagle. And um, again, do not hesitate to reach out to me. And I, I really do look forward to um, working with you guys in the future. And off to Dr. Rohde, take care. Thanks, Bridget, bye. Bye. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Dr. Rohde, and um, I am one of, the, or one of the assistant professors in sport management here at Niagara University. Um, and something that Bridget said earlier at the beginning, I kind of want to just reiterate. Um, she mentioned that the that campus, as well as our program, it's kind of like a family. That's one of the first things I kind of really realized once I got here is how much it really does feel like a family. Um, I went to an undergraduate, I went to Texas A&M, so 60,000 students, very different experience, and it never felt like family. This truly does have that feel to it. And also, just to kind of add on about the advising piece, like, because of that, I mean, I get to know you guys really on this one-on-one -on -one basis that you can't really get at other places. Um, I'm also the advisor for the, our SMA, our Sport Management Association Club here on campus. And um, so in addition to getting to know you guys in the classroom, possibly one-on-one -on -one with advising, depending on if you're my student or not, um, I also do a lot of things with this club and I get to know you guys outside of class, which is a little bit different than advising and being in class. And it's kind of fun because I get to learn a little bit about you. I get to learn what you're your goals are. And when I see those internships and different things that come across through email or online, I can reach out to you and say, Hey, you might be a good fit for this. So that's something that, you know, I never really had a professor that did that for me when I was an undergraduate student, because it was so big. Um, and so it's something I really do try to do for all of the students that I see, whether they're my advisee or not, because I get to know you guys in class. Um, so one of the things I'm going to talk about is a little bit about the course, like the curriculum for what you have to do while you're here. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quickly. So give me a moment. Um, you should all be seeing this is, we call them curriculum cards here. Um, I know at different places they call them some, something else maybe, but um, the way we kind of have it structured here is, I feel like it's a pretty straightforward type of thing. So we have, a, we call it the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So your left-hand side is all of your general education curriculum that you're gonna take regardless of your major. Um, so you'll see, these are some gen, gen ed requirements that everyone's gonna take. And then we move down and there's some core curriculum. So still again, gen ed, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Everyone's taking these courses. Um, I love that we have some free electives out here. Um, some of you might actually be interested in doing a minor. We have students that do marketing minors, management minors, business, communications, um, psychology. It really comes down to what your interests are. So you have a lot, there really is a lot of flexibility, but we can accommodate those minors within our degree plan. So you're not taking anything extra, which is kind of nice. Um, so what you really probably want to hear about tonight is the right-hand side of this curriculum card because um, it's our, our major specific stuff. So anything in our college, everyone's gonna get that business background that she mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, so you'll, you'll see here, we have management and leadership courses, we have accounting courses, we have law courses, human resource management courses. This right here at the top, everyone in our college takes all of these seven courses, regardless if you're sport management, hospitality, tourism, 
or a combination of them. Everyone takes that. And so you get a really good business background just with these classes. Um, but within sport management, we're adding on to it as well. Um, because while we might be in the business of selling fun, um, we also are in the business of business too, because sport is a business. So you'll see on here, there's everything from how to use social media and broadcasting and communication stuff that's within that sport comm class. Um, we have governance course. So, you know, when we think of governance with college athletics, we think of the NCA, right? Um, so they have their own set of policies that govern all of college sports. Um, and almost every level of sport has some sort of policy. So if you play sports in high school, the state that you live in, if you're in New York, the New York one, I'm originally from Texas. So, um, ours is the university interscholastic league. So it's UIL for short. Um, but they govern and make the policies for high school sports in your state. So that's a little bit different across states. And we don't always think about that. Um, so you learn some about that. And you can see there's a finance course, um, marketing, facility management. I know she mentioned a, a bunch of these things earlier, but we really do have a good, I feel like it's a pretty well-rounded program. We have students that go into all areas of sport. So we are preparing you for that with the courses that we have here. Um, and then right here at the bottom, you see six courses that are empty. Um, and this is, I don't know, I really like this. This is one of my favorite parts in the curriculum card because you get to take any six courses within our college that you have an interest in besides what's already up on the, on the sheet. So I say that because, you know, if you are a sport management major and you have an interest in um, facilities, well, what else, what else is going to be in a facility besides maybe the field? You're going to have a concession stand, for example. Um, there are several food and beverage courses that are offered within our college um, that will help, help you be prepared for some of those things within um, running a facility because it's important to understand, do you have enough food? Do you have enough hot dogs for the game on Saturday? Um, because the last thing you want is for your concession stand to run out of hot dogs and people are not happy, right? Um, so this down here is kind of one of my favorite things. Um, another thing, I know she mentioned flexibility as well, and I'm going to add on to that because we have a number of students that are majoring in sport management and luxury management or sport management and hospitality, um, or they're, du they're double majoring in things within our college. Um, and it's easy to do that, especially with this area of these electives. We can get the right overlap in there and we can get you guys out with maybe just a couple extra classes for a double major in our college, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so before I continue, do you guys have any questions? Because I can sit here and talk about some of this stuff for a long time. I was an academic advisor before I was a professor, so uh, I can talk a lot. <laughs> any questions? None yet? Okay, great. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a background why what on another reason why, why I'm here is since we're the College of Hospitality and almost soon to be sport and tourism, um, my research areas have been in sport tourism. And we don't always think about all these pieces inter, inter overlapping together, but they really do. Um, being from Texas, I'm a giant football fan, especially at the college level. And so we travel to bowl games many, we've done that many times and, you know, you guys might be traveling with a travel team, um, or maybe you travel to watch your favorite team play. So when you travel, you might often be staying the night, you're eating at restaurants, you're purchasing merchandise at the game, possibly all of those things are hand in hand between hospitality, sport, and tourism. And so to me, that's just a unique opportunity to have all of these together because of the fact that that's where you're spending your money when you're traveling for fun. Even if you just go on a vacation and you go play around to golf somewhere, you're incorporating that sport piece in there and maybe not even realizing it. Um, what questions do you guys have? I'm going to stop sharing my screen there so you can see if you have questions. 
feel free to unmute if you want to ask or if you want to drop it in the chat. I have it up and I can certainly <laughs> offer it that way. Oh, let's see. Oh, no questions. But okay, I will take that. Um, <laughs> I will take that as we've done our job and have answered the questions that you might have had. Um, as I'll tell you guys a little bit more about SMA just because um, you're here. Um, and it's something that I guess my second semester here, this is my fifth year here. My second semester, um, I was able to take over SMA and it is probably one of my favorite things. Um, every semester we have traveled with the exception of the last few because of COVID. Um, we have traveled to a number of places. Uh, we've gone to New York City, we've gone to Boston, we've gone to Tampa, um, we've gone to Pittsburgh. I'm trying to think where else we've gone. Um, and some of these are short trips, like about three days. Some of them have been a little bit longer. Um, we literally were two weeks out from flying to Dallas for a three or four day trip right before COVID hit. Um, and of course, all that changed. Um, <laughs> But during these trips, we tour facilities, we meet with alumni, we um, have met with industry professionals, um, and we, we do a lot of different things within sport. Um, for example, in a few weeks, we're going to Cleveland for a couple of days, for like three days. We are doing a breakfast panel with uh, sport industry individuals uh, in the Cleveland area. We're going to be touring the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We're going to go to a, um, a Cavaliers game, and then we're also going to be able to get a tour of the Cavaliers facility. So in a short couple of days, we're going to get to do quite a few things. And you don't always get these opportunities if you were to go there on their own, on your own. I know right now, just when we generally inquired about tours for facilities in Cleveland, nobody's really doing those right now. However, once we were able to talk to somebody within the group ticket office and kind of let them know why we were coming, that we were a club and, you know, learning, and we're all sports students, um, we were able to get that tour in um, because of the situation and the fact that we're there for learning um, and connecting and, and meeting different people. Um, so there's, there's some really cool things that we do um, and some cool opportunities um, and, they're already starting to figure out where they're going to go next semester. So I don't know yet. They haven't decided. Um, any other questions? I don't. I know. Yeah, this is awesome. This is great because it was examples and seeing the curriculum right. part is, I think, really important for students to see what they're going to be taking for classes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know. I remember way back when, when I was going into college and, you know, being able to see what kind of courses I was going to take during that time. Really, it got me excited because I'm like, oh, this sounds interesting. I'm not sure what this is about, but we'll get there, you know. Um, and, I, you know, I, I think, I know in my classes, just to kind of give you an idea of what my classes look like, um, I typically do my classes as much hands-on in the sense of projects where it's experiential learning from the class, classroom perspective. Um, like, I teach sport and recreation programming, which is a class that's offered in the fall. And everyone's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> um, and I kind of look at it from the approach of think about those summer camps that you went to, um, whether it was through a college or the community, even though it's more than just summer camps, right? So this is community sport. This is um, parks and recreation. This might be that camp you went to through a college or some of the programs that are offered through professional leagues. Um, how are those planned, created? budgeted, managed, registered for, advertised, you name it, all those pieces. My students right now are creating an entire manual over a specific event that they are creating. Most of it's, of course, you know, fictional, right? Um, let's see. And I'll answer that, that question in just a second. Uh, and so what they're doing is they're looking at every aspect of that. And if that's their expertise at that organization they work at, what if they got sick and they couldn't run it? The next person could pick up that manual and do it. And so this is a great tool that they can take with them down the road to job interviews um, and even just the experience that they're gaining from it that they can say, oh, well, this is a problem solving thing. Um, and the cool part is they also take a piece of it of their schedule from their event. And we go to the rec center on campus 
and they get to run it for like 45 minutes during a class and their classmates are the participants. And so it's one of the most fun things. They really enjoy it, but it's something where it's really hands-on because you can't troubleshoot until you're doing it. Um, Cause you can guess, but getting through that process and doing it, you're like, Oh, that was way too much time for this event or this piece. Um, or that was not enough time or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see your question here. Um, oh, you can join the sport management organization. Are you talking about the, um, the club or are you talking about the major Dominic? If you're talking about the club, you can join, oh, the major. Okay, perfect. You can, so there's a lot of ways that this can happen. You could apply straight away for sport management and start out with us. Um, so that's one option. You could start out as AEP, which is academic exploration. Um, so it's maybe, I, I'm thinking about sport and I'm thinking about something else, but I haven't decided yet. So maybe you start out there and you can take some classes out of both so you can kind of figure it out. Um, or you can start out at something else. Maybe you have another interest as well. And then you're like, okay, I'm not super happy in these classes. I want to change over to sports. So yes, you can change your major at any time, basically. Um, however, the earlier you make those decisions, the easier it's going to be. So you're not taking some things that maybe don't apply to this degree. Um, so does that help answer that question, Dominic? So I would say if you're not 100% sure, maybe look into AEP um, just because they work with you and the interests you have to, um, to help you kind of figure that out and put you on the right track, but also to get you in classes that are going to count towards your gen ed, but also give you some direction, right? Um, we have a lot of students that start out as, as AEP. Um, I also teach the intros to sport management class. And a good number of the students in my class are academic exploration students because they have an interest in sport. They're just trying to make a final decision for themselves. So that is definitely another way to go. Um, we'd love to have you from the beginning, but if you're on the fence, I mean, I would say go to AEP because I want you to help them to help you and spend that time with you to find the right spot for you. So that's a great question. Questions? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, but as for the club, you can join any semester that you want. So, but that's, a, that's a great question about the major. What other questions do you guys have? I promise I'm not scary. You can talk or type. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. So I definitely want to tell you guys, if you want an opportunity to shadow us, um, Okay. Um, so right now we have around 120 students in sport management. So I would say roughly about 25% of that is graduating every school year, right? So, cause we're replacing you guys over, you know, every four years, it's kind of, there's always somebody going out and there's always somebody coming in. So I would say there's like 40 to 50 potentially. I mean, that's probably on the higher end. It kind of just depends. Um, we fluctuate just like any other major, um, but our, our major has been growing. So that number has been going up for us, yes. um, which is a really good thing. Um, but also I will tell you, we have, um, I know Bridget mentioned this earlier, um, but in our athletic department, almost every sporting event is run by students. And I don't know that I can emphasize enough on the experience that you can gain through our athletic department. Um, as someone that's taught at other schools, both big and small, this is the only place that I have ever seen these students have as much opportunity to do different things for a game itself, whether it's working with ESPN on the broadcasting side, because they utilize at least 10 to 12 students for a game, depending on the type it is. You get to hockey and basketball, that number goes up. Um, as well as the operation side of it of, you know, someone might be doing stats, someone might be running the clock, someone might be mopping the floor when the player, you know, during those timeouts. I mean, there's literally every job has to be done. Um, and you might start out small, but you work your way up. We have students that are in charge of all the marketing and promotions during a game as undergraduate students. 
because they volunteered and worked hard. So, um, having so division that, one sports right on our campus is such a benefit. It really, really is huge. And having us as small ish mm -hmm. medium as we are, it's right. just so many opportunities for students, hands-on experiential learning is the way to go. Mm -hmm. I'm a big proponent of experiential learning. And so I, I do different things, like I said, in my courses to make sure you're learning by doing, whether it's creating a mock version of something or, you know, practicing talking in front of people to all kinds of things in between. Um, it's super important. And I think we, most people learn by doing. And so by doing those things in class and even through SMA, you're getting a lot of experience, not only on some personal like skills, but also in the sport industry. So, um, we, so we don't really do a whole lot with, with, uh, UB, but with their athletic department. Um, but I don't, I don't know what type of partnerships we maybe have had, except for if it's okay, we're having, you know, the first run of the NCA come to Buffalo in, in, you know, next spring. Um, I'm, I believe there's a number of institutions that are working together on, on that, on having that here, because there's going to need to be gyms, right? They're going to have different gyms working together because there's a number of teams, especially in the first round. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know how much our students are going over to Buffalo to do stuff over there. Cause I mean, that is about a 30 minute drive depending on traffic. Um, but I'm not going to completely say that that's not off, that's off the table because, you know, we can eventually, we can always make those connections and help you make those connections to potentially um, get some experience in a larger D1 athletic department. So, and that's something that we've talked about doing in, in the spring or future semesters as well as, you know, SMA is taking these trips, but we might do a trip or two to some large division one athletic programs to do some tours of facilities like Penn state, for example, or uh, Michigan or something, just because, um, you know, we have some great facilities here, but again, comparing it to a school like Penn state is a very different type of thing. I mean, I went to Texas A&M and to Tennessee and those facilities are crazy giant. I mean, football stadiums with a hundred thousand people mm -hmm. is very different than if we had football here. I mean, with our hockey, even it's, it's pretty small, but it's a great experience. So, yeah. um, it's, it's kind of, even though they're division one, um, you'll learn if you, wherever you go in division one, there's the, the FBS schools, the, the bowl division schools, the FCS, the championships division, and then there's division one, no football, which is what we are. So, um, some of that comes down to budget. Some of that comes down to the programs that are offered. So, um, you know, it's, it's great to get those experiences of different places um, and different mm -hmm. levels of sport and different sports in general too. Yeah. What Thank other you questions? so that was much. A great question. Yeah. I don't know that there are any. Oh, I was going to say the shadow we can, you guys could come in to campus and you can sit in a classroom. Um, I know I've had several students. Oh goodness. Sorry. Of course. I didn't even hear it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, because I had somebody trying to call me on my, <laughs> and I have a Mac, so everything's connected, right? Um, <laughs> um, you are more than welcome to come and sit in any class of mine, for sure, or any of our other professors. We are all more than happy to have you guys join us for a class or a day on campus. Um, and I know I will turn it over to you for the sure. overnight portion. Sure. So um, a couple different things, um, and I have it in the chat here. Um, I'm going to just pop up a link. Um, if you're interested in visiting Niagara because you haven't been able to come to an open house yet or um, you want to do an overnight or uh, Niagara nights, you want to do a shadow, this is a link to visit and there's loads of opportunities there. We have a couple open houses coming up, one in November, one in December, um, but we do offer visits um, every day except for Sunday. Um, and in addition to that, something that's really, really important to note, and I'll put the link in for this, is our Eagle Experience Scholarship. Um, the deadline is coming up on Sunday, but um, I don't know anyone right now that's giving out $1,500, but we are. <laughs> so if you apply um, and you connect with your counselor 
and you um, visit either virtually or in person, you will get an additional $1,500 scholarship um, your first year. So I put that link in there if you have questions. And in that link, um, you can see how to connect with your counselor if you're not sure who your counselor is or how to do that. Um, but please, that is such a wonderful opportunity for students. Uh, I mean, $1,500 is huge right now. So um, the Eagle Experience is, is a way to just kind of get that edge up a little bit, which is really, really nice. Uh, but there are plenty of opportunities to visit. We're really excited um, that you were all able to join us tonight. And thank you so much, Dr. Rohde. That was really, really awesome. Absolutely. Thank absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. And it's, I'm so glad that you guys were here tonight. If you guys have questions, um, I'm going to stick my email. I know it was on the PowerPoint, but I'm going to stick my email here in the chat. Just in case you come up with something, you can always send me an email. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any of those questions that you have. So yeah. any um, admissions related questions, out. I have, you can email me. I threw mine in there too. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you guys so much. Yeah. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much.